Welcome to the Awaken Goddess Show, your source for inspiration, wisdom, and personal discovery. The place to learn from a diverse mix of mentors, metaphysical experts, spiritual leaders, and best-selling authors from around the world. I'm Angela Wilkinson, mindset mentor and founder of the Awakened Goddess Academy. Join me as I explore the minds of my masterful guests while they share powerful insights and easy-to-use tools you can start using right away. Now, let's tap into the energy of the Awakened Goddess and be enlightened by today's guest. Well, welcome, Dr. Jamie, to the Awaken Goddess Show. Uh, I am really thrilled to have you joining me today because you are a woman after my own heart because you're known as Dr. Love. (laughs) So welcome. (laughs) Nice to be with you. Yeah. So why don't we just start off and start with a little bit about your story and um, about your book and um, yeah, just let's just start there and see where we go. All right. Well, it always helps people to know a little bit about my background. Mm-hmm. From the time I was a young girl, I had a detailed premonition. <clears throat> now, I mean, you have to understand I'm a mainstream shrink here. You know, the web, Web's first relationship advice site, I'm just known as a mainstream shrink. So right. that, that's the backdrop. And when I was a little girl, I had a detailed premonition of the man I was going to marry. I saw his face, I saw his body, I saw everything about him. And so I received the message, just wait till he appears. Don't date, wait. A very medieval kind of concept. <laughs> <laughs> Who did this in, the, <laughs> in those days? So I waited and he did appear on the first day of my freshman year at Vassar College. Mm-hmm. I had been shut out of all intro sociology classes And I wanted to take sociology. So I asked the secretary of the department, what can I do? And she said, go ask the department chair, Jean Pin, if he can find a seat for you in one of the closed classes. Mm. Well, the minute I stepped into Jean's office, I had the first and only out-of-body experience of my life. Mm. I literally felt my soul (laughs) shooting at high speed through a tunnel to the end of my life. And when I shot back into my body, I received the message, remember every aspect of this meeting, he's going to be everything to you one day. And then I forgot all about it and went about my life as a college student at Vassar. Now, soon after meeting Jean, I found out that for most of his life, he had been one of the most famous Jesuit priests in history. He had taught at the Vatican, and he founded a movement called Liberation Theology designed to fight church oppression from within. And he actually launched to international fame when he publicly opposed the Pope and the Catholic Church as they were trying to block the legalization of divorce in Italy. And he was a radical feminist Jesuit priest. He told me later he didn't want to see women trapped in marriages where they were being abused. So he fought on the grounds of religious freedom, liberation theology. The church should butt out of the private sector. And he won. He got the divorce bill passed. He changed the course of Italian history. And soon after, the Pope granted him the dispensation so that he wasn't excommunicated. And he moved to the U.S. and was recruited by Vassar, uh, where he had served as the chair of Department of Sociology for 10 years on the day that I met him. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody needs to know this because this is a very important part of our story. You already know where I'm going with this. (laughs) I was raised in a completely different way. My parents were devoutly atheist Jews. (laughs) The only religion they practiced was religiously hating each other's guts (laughs) and mine. I talk about this in part one of Love Never Dies. So I never went to synagogue, never discussed religion with them. Certainly, I didn't discuss religion with Jean in our entire 27 years together. So now... In the last year at Vassar, I needed help with a statistical portion of my thesis. And I had heard that, among other things, Jean had been a famous statistician, having founded the Vatican's first and only social research center. Mm. So even though he wasn't my advisor, I asked him if he would help me. And he cheerfully gave me his time. And within a couple of weeks, we just knew we were crazy for each other. We were twins separated at birth. We were just soulmates. And from that moment on, we were inseparable for 27 years. Mm. 
Mm. Now, wow. in the last year of Jean's bodily life, we both started to have a premonition that he was going to leave his body due to an accident. We just didn't know when or where it was going to happen. And on the day that we left for Italy for our final vacation, lightning struck the rose arbor and destroyed it. And then I saw 40 huge big crows in the yard. And I thought, this is not good. But we went anyway. And one day while we were on the beach, Jean's hand was up over his head like this, as if to block the rays of the sun. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I know, a bee swooped down and stung his left hand at the exact location of Christ's stigmata. Mm. And I now watched my beloved suffocate to death in front of my eyes. So it's really hard for me in a short interview to describe the agony of having him ripped from me in this way. But I tell the story in part one of Love Never Dies. So when I came back to the hotel room, I collapsed on the bed, I'm shaking, I'm trembling, I'm crying hysterically. And the next thing I know, I feel that man's hand stroke the entire length of my spine. Mm. And I sit bolt upright, I look over my (laughs) shoulder, I know what I felt. I didn't see anything, but he was there. And he has been with me ever since that moment. And his outrageously astonishing manifestations to this day often in front of witnesses, have proven to me we don't die. Mm -hmm. And therefore, our relationships are not meant to end in death. And so I've created my groundbreaking new trans-dimensional grief therapy method that completely diverges from the Western approach, which is grieve, let go, and move on and do it in six months, or else we're going to put a psychiatric label on you. We're going to (laughs) put drugs down your throat, which is appalling. Instead, My method shows you how to say hello, not goodbye, without the assistance of a medium, a channeler, or a psychic. And then there's just one more piece. As a shrink, I know millions of people worldwide harbor unfinished business Mm -hmm. with those spirit. And again, Western grief therapy offers us no way of working out our unfinished business. So my new dialoguing with the departed technique offers us the first vehicle for not only reconnecting, but also making peace with the deceased. Mm. Wow. And I imagine there was quite a journey for you to get to this place to where you're able to share this. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, because, you know, what is it that we have to go through these things before we can share them with other people? In part one, I describe my own blossoming, you know, discovery of Jean's presence. If you'd like, I can share a couple yes, examples please. you know yeah. and then you have to read the book remember that commercial read the book to get them all but you know I'll give you a couple I'll give you a few so when I came back from Italy the first night alone in bed you know it's 27 years almost three decades I'm alone in our bed for the first time and I hear Jean quoting something to me I'll get back to that in a second because it's important what he was saying but the next morning I come down to the kitchen And I hear him speaking to me. It's really through thought induction or mind melding. Well, I didn't know what that was at the time because I didn't know anything. You know, I didn't read any new age books. I didn't know the terminology. So I unplugged that phone. I want you to know. (laughs) I unplugged it. So I I don't even get that. That is a whole nother bizarro situation. (laughs) How you doing that? I've never had that happen before. So well, anyway. well so just to just to give everybody a little sneak peek before we started recording, we had some technical difficulties and and Dr. Jamie was saying, Yeah, that's that's just, you know, what happens and and so he wants to communicate some way. So <laughs> part of our interview. So, yeah. so uh, I go down to the kitchen in the first, you know, I hadn't slept the whole night. I go down. He says, open the kitchen door. I want to show you something. I open the door and there's a tiny little chipmunk sitting on the step. And my foot is touching him. Now, normally a chipmunk would be yeah. afraid, would run away, but I could tell this chipmunk was in a trance. He was sort of frozen stiff <laughs> and he wasn't moving. 
I knew something was up. Next thing I know, that little chipmunk begins to mimic my husband's bodily departure. He starts ripping at his little face with his little hands, mimicking the way my husband was ripping at the oxygen mask to try to get it off his face because the air wasn't getting in and he was suffocating. And so, of course, I'm watching this for 20 minutes and tears are pouring down my face. And finally, after 20 minutes of this torment, I see that little chipmunk visibly cough up a wonk of mucus Mm -hmm. in his spine. Mm -hmm. And even in my befuddled state, I realized my husband was using this little animal as an open vessel. This is the term that I've since used to describe both animals, domestic and wild, and humans who are naturally open vessels for spirit to communicate with us. So he was using this little open vessel to let me know I'm okay, Jamie, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. So now, around this time, I had to fax his death certificate to Verizon to take his name off the account. And I had sent many multi-page faxes throughout the day, no problem. But when I went to fax his death certificate, the cover letter faxes without a hitch, but the machine freezes and will not fax his death certificate. I try again with the obit. Cover letter goes, but the obit freezes. I try 20 times. I give up. I think he's trying to tell me something, right? But I don't know exactly what it is. The next day I go to the lawyer. I hand the papers to the secretaries and I say, could you help me fax this? I don't say why. 20 minutes later, I'm waiting, waiting. What the heck is going on? All the secretaries come from the back they're crying. They said, Jamie, we tried to <laughs> The obit and the death certificate will not fax the cover letter faxes. And they said, he's trying to tell you he's not gone. So I go home. I have to do this faxing again somewhere else. And he hangs it up again. So I say to him, Jean, I think you keep hanging this up because I keep forgetting that you're still here with me. If I promise to try to remember, will you let this freaking fax go? <laughs> I already so I can't the fax. I feel this tidal wave of love pour over me. I know that's his acknowledgement. I heard you, Jamie. Mm-hmm. Okay. I reissue the fax. It goes through in its entirety. So, I'm starting to realize now that pretty wild things are happening to me. And I'll just give one more example, which involves an earthly prop. I, 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 I don't know what I'm supposed to do here with this because this never, I, 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 I'm going <laughs> to pull over here for one second and see if there's something that I can do to help us. You know, like I'm really going to smash it with a hammer. <laughs> I'm That's all right. Get... I want. He's probably highlighting things that you're saying. He's just like confirming what you're saying. So That's okay. I was notice I was about to say. I'm going to give an example of how he communicates through the phone. <laughs> this is what I was about to say because electronic devices are what I call earthly props. Okay, mm-hmm. and spirits will often communicate through these earthly props. So the the example starts with. Uh, I'm lying on the closet floor crying, which was my hobby in the early days. I did a lot of crying as a hobby. And I'm thinking, you know, I got to call my friend Ann. No, don't bother her. She's working. And I'm in my mm-hmm. mind thinking this for about a half hour. And finally, in the distance, I hear the phone ringing. I pick myself up. I drag myself to the phone. It's Ann. She says, Jamie, did you call me? I said, Ann, I tell her I was thinking I need to talk to you, but I didn't get up off the floor. <laughs> she says to me, Jamie, my phone rang and your name and number appeared on the caller ID. (laughs) So I said, all right, all right. We were so blown away. He knew I needed this. Mm -hmm. He called her. He manipulated the earthly prop, rang her, and they made my number. So a year later, I have a chest cough, and I'm thinking, I'm going to suffocate to death the way he did. And I say to him out loud, I'm desperate. Prove to me you're here with me right now. Do that caller ID phone trick again. Do it with my housekeeper, Donna. Do it right now. Two seconds later, the phone rings. It's Donna. She says, did you call? I said, Donna, I told Jean, please put my name and number on your caller ID. She said, my phone rang and your name and number appeared on the caller ID. So around this time, I'm in a writer's group and the head of it is Gabe Davis. 
a devout Jewish atheist, right? And he'd heard all the stories I was telling because I was writing Love Never Dies, and he heard all about my caller ID phone tricks. So he said, you know, I'd like to see whether Jean repeats that caller ID phone trick, and this time I would like to see what the <laughs> phone call log shows a record of dialing out hmm. even when you don't use the phone. Mm -hmm. So I forget the challenge. A month later, I'm driving behind Gabe and his wife Robin to meet them for dinner. I will never forget what happened next. Suddenly, I feel a tidal wave of love pour into me. I know it's Jean. I look at the clock on the dashboard and I note it's 4.58. I pull into the restaurant, I open my door, and he stampedes me, and he says, Jamie, you won't believe what happened. I said, what happened? He said, at 4.58, my cell phone rang. <laughs> he said, your name and number appeared on the caller ID. He said, I picked up the phone, and a man's voice said, is Jamie there? <laughs> Jamie there? He said, the voice had an accent and prolonged the word there. Well, Jean mm -hmm. had an accent, and he mm -hmm. did prolong that word. It sounded like there. He said it wasn't a real call. The voice just faded away, and the call never clicked off. He says, go get your phone. See if it called me at 458. So I dig into the bottom of my purse. I hadn't used it all day. Sure enough, it called him at 458. So the point of all these over-the-top manifestations Right after Jean left his body, he told me, Jamie, let our love shine like a torch that lights the path for others. In other words, mm -hmm. our story is meant for you and for everybody watching to let you know that your loved ones are here with you too. They're just waiting for you to open the door of your heart and let them back in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I, I, I hear people saying like, through the ethers, it's like, well, but how do I connect? How do I get to see these oh, confirmations? I know, I know. And, you know, I do, uh, I, believe it or not, the show I do on Hay House, it's called Love Never Dies. Big surprise, right? <laughs> it, it, it's the most listened to hour on Hay House, which blew my mind when I heard it. More listened to than all the hugest names mm. in the spiritual community. And it's because people are really, really hungry for our message and our method. And I do get calls every week from people who say, I'm really pissed at you, Jamie, you know, uh, because you're getting signs and I'm not. And, blah, 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 you know, and I say, listen, read the book, read Love Never Dies, and then tell me you're not getting signs. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. uh, so the thing is, where I go next in Love Never Dies is I start to prepare you to reconnect with your loved ones. And there's, what we have to do is a kind of multi-tiered process. So can I start switching into this yes, now? So definitely. Everybody mm -hmm. who's watching begins to get an, a sense of how we do this. So Yeah, because that's the question. They're like, yeah, how do I do it? How? Right. So the first thing is, in part two of Love Never Dies, I talk about how to overcome the false beliefs and the false religious teachings that block most people from reconnecting. Mm -hmm. The first false belief is that we're not supposed to reconnect with those in spirit. Now, how did I discover that this is wrong? Well, remember I said my first night back, Jean was speaking to me, mm -hmm. and I would come back to it. I was lying in the bed, and he was quoting something. I had no clue what it was. The next day, I go to meet with his priest to prepare the readings for his funeral. Now, again, I never went to church. I don't know this dude. I'm meeting him for the first time. And I say to him, listen, my husband has been speaking to me all night, and he's quoting something. So the priest looks at me like, yo, this babe <laughs> lost her marbles, right? But then when I told him what Jean said, he blanched. He crossed himself. He said, dear God, James, <laughs> at first I didn't believe that Jean was speaking to you, but I do now. He said, you are quoting an obscure biblical passage from the communion of saints. Mm. Like I would know because, as I said, I never went to church, never went to synagogue, and Jean and I did not discuss religion when he lived in a body. What I found out, it took me a year to understand why Jean quoted that passage to me. Okay, the communion of saints says that our loved ones in spirit are one with or in communion with God and the saints. And since we're supposed to stay in communion and communication 
with God and the saints. It means the Bible is telling us we are supposed to stay in communion and communication with our loved ones in spirit because they are one Mm -hmm. with God and the saints. Mm -hmm. So Jean's message to all of us is what we've been told about the afterlife is dead wrong if you'll pardon my pun. (laughs) We're not supposed to live in an emotional wasteland separated from those we love, waiting until we quote unquote die and enter heaven Mm -hmm. in order to be reunited with them. Because as Jean said to me, heaven is a state, not a place. Heaven is all around us. Heaven is here and now. So this means we are supposed to reconnect with our loved ones and we're supposed to do it now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a big one. Now here's another one. I hear this a lot. Well, you know, if you reconnect with your loved ones, you can't move on with your life. <laughs> this is totally bass awkward. Yeah. Because people who are grieving, marinating in misery, they're not moving on with their lives. They're not stepping back into their lives. So, but when you reconnect with your loved ones, your grief transforms to joy. I see it every week on Hay House Radio. I get cards and letters from people all over the world. Wow, I've reconnected. I'm no longer marinating in my misery. I'm in joy. And now I'm in my life, fully in play. Now, I also hear, well, how can you love again? Well, this is like saying to a mother, you have a child. Do you love your first child? Oh, yeah. Well, you can't have any more. (laughs) Our hearts are made to love. We have so much room to love. Everyone who walks the earth plane, everyone who walks the spirit plane. I also hear this one. This is totally not true. Well, uh, you're preventing them from moving on. Mm. Well, where are they going? Remember, Jean said, Death is an illusion. There's a very thin veil between the realm where you are and the realm where I am. The veil is thinner than you can ever imagine. I'm I'm standing right here. They Mm -hmm. don't go anywhere. All these concepts are earthly misconceptions of them, what, going to a palace in the sky and all this other stuff, untrue. And furthermore, what has been revealed to me is it is their work to support us, guide us, hold our hands as we travel down the bumpy road called life to be our spirit guides, to help us fulfill our emotional and spiritual destinies. That's what their work is. Jean said to me, Jamie, what else is there for me to do? It's my (laughs) occupation to love you. He speaks in rhymes a lot, so I'll remember it. I hear this a lot. So we are not preventing them from moving on. By reconnecting, we are helping them to perform their holy work, which is to help us Mm -hmm. evolve and grow and fulfill our potential. I also hear, oh, well, you're opening the door to the devil. Oh, boy. Well, this one ain't true neither because there is no devil. Jean, the Dalai Lama said that Jean was one of the 50 men of all time who was one with God. He never spoke about devils. They didn't exist. The devil is merely a projection of our own unwanted dark side that we put out into the boogeyman, the devil, you know. It doesn't exist. Now, Mm -hmm. there may be less evolved beings. They're not devils, but they're less evolved. You don't want to talk to them. Don't talk to them. We have a built-in, what I call, internal call blocking, a spiritual call blocking. You don't want to take the call. Don't take it. But above all, our loved ones in spirit are our gatekeepers. They're here to protect us against any negative forces, if there are any. Okay. Now, there are so many other false beliefs and false religious teachings. I tackle them all. You've got to be able to get rid of them in order to be prepared and open enough to then really reconnect. And I want to also demystify this whole process because a lot of times we think, oh, I need a medium. I need a channeler. I need a psychic. Mm -hmm. What I explain to you in this part of Love Never Dies is we are all born with the innate ability to energetically communicate. And in fact, we do this every day on a daily basis. Think about when you park at a light. You look over at the driver in the neighboring car. Doesn't that driver always look back at you because he or she senses the energetic frequency of your gaze? Mm -hmm. A lot of twins who live on opposite ends of the world know when the other's in trouble because they sense the energetic frequency of the communication. How do close couples know what the other is thinking? Because, again, it's energetic communication. So, essentially, when we communicate with those in spirit, we are doing nothing more than sending and receiving energetic signals. Right. That's all it is. And I show you in part three in Love Never Dies how to tune to the spirit channel in your brain so Mm -hmm. that you just get better at sending and receiving energetic signals. And I want to also have everybody know 
it's, it's as simple as this. Quantum physics now explains to us that 95% of our universe is comprised of dark matter. Not because it's evil, but because it doesn't reflect light. And what they believe now is that spirit beings reside in the dark matter. So this explains what John said to me. I'm standing right here. They are. Mm -hmm. And so what they do when they leave their bodies, they shed the turtle shell. And what remains of their essence is the energy. Mm -hmm. And as Einstein said, energy cannot be destroyed. So in part three of Love Never Dies, I just show you how to send and receive energetic signals with and to and from your loved ones in spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, do you yeah. want me to start to help everybody to understand how we're going to do this? Sure. Yeah. And and I just want to say it's like you know we get so wrapped up in our own heads and our thinking. We think, uh, try to think our way into spirituality or connecting, and and that's the last that's place not, we need to be. You cannot because you know, or people will say this doesn't make sense. Ah, if it doesn't make sense, if the human mind can't fathom it, it's of the divine. Yeah. Don't even try yeah. to subject it to the law of logic. Our poor human brains don't have the capacity to understand many things. But then allow. Mm -hmm. Just allow mm -hmm. the experience to unfold. Okay? Yeah, yeah because so, it's like, yeah, you don't see, you don't necessarily see with your, your eyes. No. Your see with the ones. eyes of your heart. That's right. Yeah. You with the ears of your heart. So in part three of Love Never Dies, the first step to helping you become reconnected is to create what I call a state of receptivity. Mm -hmm. Now, this is really important because one of the first things Jean said to me was, Jamie, the noise of the day drowns me out. Anytime you want to hear me, be still and quiet. Come to the bed, put your head on my shoulder, and you will hear me. This was very important for me to realize because we in the Western world are never still, never quiet. Yeah. And so our constant buzzing and noise and TVs and texting, we can't hear anything. Well, it really so, just numbs us out so we don't And they, can't get, they yeah. can't get to us and we are not on a channel in our brain, the spirit channel that is receptive. Mm -hmm. To be receptive, to be tuned to the spirit channel, we have to be still and quiet. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? So in this chapter on create, In Love Never Dies creating a state of receptivity, I show you how to be still and quiet, how to find what I call pockets of peace. Now, I'm not saying you have to convert your condo into a convent, but just even 20 minutes of peacefulness. I show you how to find the right peaceful practice for you, how to do a breathing exercise that Jean showed me to instantly bring spirit into you because spirit is born on the breath. Can you show us what that is? Uh, yeah, sure. It's, um, <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, there are so many uh, different meditations in the book. But essentially, what you will do is you will sit quiet and you will do a breath counting mm. where you, can, you say inhale one and then you say exhale one. And then you say inhale two and you say exhale two. If a thought intrudes, you just say thought and you come back to one and start counting again. Just the counting is enough to still the mind and not let you be distracted by thoughts. That's just sure. one of the many exercises in Love Never Dies. And I've, I've recorded all the meditations, uh, and you can find them at AskDrLove.com under my store, Love Never Dies Audio Meditations. So now I also show you how to use nature to be more receptive, mm -hmm. and I also show you how to tune your five senses because remember spirit beings are pure energy they're constantly sending communications and signs and messages to all your five senses so the more tuned up your five senses are the more able you're going to be able to perceive the signs that are being sent to you all the time okay. now speaking of signs this segues into the next chapter in love never dies which is recognizing the signs because as i said earlier so many people will say to me i'm not getting signs and then they read this chapter and they say, oh, this happened and so yeah. did this, so did that. So for most people, becoming aware of the signs is sufficient to begin the process of reconnection. Because remember, spirits are able to influence the material world in infinite ways. Mm -hmm. They can give us signs of their presence through sounds, through sense, through animals behaving oddly like the chipmunk, through symbolic communications, rainbows and butterflies by dropping coins on us, mm 
this leads me to a really good example. They love to drop coins on us. It was the anniversary week of Jean's bodily departure, and I say to a patient of mine, Kyla, he drops coins on me all the time, especially on this week, to let me know he's aware that this is the week he left his body. And mm-hmm. the coins are always minted on the year he left his body. Oh, so nice. she blinks, and she says, Jamie, I nearly forgot. She points to her cowboy boots. She says, see these boots? She says, they were off my feet this week in my bedroom when I saw a quarter falling out of thin air. <laughs> Fell in the boot, and I got the message, it was for you. She says, let me give it to you now. At this point, I hear Jean say, you'll, hear, you'll see, it was minted the year that I left my body. She hands it to me, and it was. Okay. How fun. Now, at this point, you have to brace yourself. Put okay. your seatbelt on. <laughs> where we're going now, where I take you in Love Never Dies, is to a place that nobody's ever done before. The CEO of Hay House said, we've never seen anything like this. And that's pretty wild because they are the woo-woo publisher. They've seen it all. So what I show you how to do now is I show you how to engage in a back-and-forth dialogue with spirit in order to reconnect, to obtain guidance, to say goodbye to the physical body if someone was ripped from you due to sudden accidental death or illness, and also to heal unfinished business. Now, I want to give an example of the difference between spirit dropping static signs on us versus us communicating back and forth Mm -hmm. with the help of these signs, with the help of earthly props like electronics, with the help of human and animal open vessels. So can I give you an example, a couple of examples so people get what I mean? Okay, so this is an example of a static sign. It was the anniversary week this year of Jean's bodily departure and the book Love Never Dies is being launched and I go to the chiropractor, I'm alone in the office and I say to the secretary, Teresa, this is the anniversary week and he's dropping a lot of signs on me. With that, I smell gardenias. Mm. I do not say a word and she looks at me and she says, Jamie, do you smell gardenias? I said, Teresa, that is fantastic. Jean is dropping a sign on both of us. It's called the scent of sanctity. But there it is. It's a beautiful sign he dropped on us. Now I go back to my office, and I tell this story to my patient, Regina, who desperately needs to reconnect with her sister in spirit. As I tell her about the scent of gardenias, I hear Jean saying to me, but I wish I could give you roses. Now, Regina doesn't know that Jean always gave me roses every week. Regina pops up off the couch. She says, Jamie, do you smell roses? (laughs) In this really elegant manifestation, Jean was dialoguing with me with the assistance of my patient as a human open vessel, Mm -hmm. confirming to me I heard what he said right. He wants to give me roses. And then he put the scent of roses and the thought of roses in her mind to let me know I heard him right. And he also confirmed to her her ability to hear spirit. Now, I want to give another example that sort of pulls out all the bells and whistles. It's a good example of how Jean communicates with me using a human open vessel and earthly props. It was Valentine's week, and I had just done the Coast to Coast show, and Love Never Dies became an overnight bestseller. It sells out on Amazon. And the next day, I get a call from this guy who says to me, Jamie, your husband is burning up my brain with messages. <laughs> now he proceeds to tell me stuff in French and Italian. I know it's Jean speaking through him as an open vessel because Jean used to say these things to me in French and Italian. And then the guy says to me, but Jamie, I'm a hillbilly. I don't know no Italian. <laughs> I said, Dude, I believe you. Your accent really sucks really bad. So now, a couple of days later, it's Valentine's Day. And he calls me again. He says, I hope you're sitting down. I said, okay, what happened? He said, this morning I was sitting with my hands in my lap. I wasn't even touching the computer when your husband spoke to me and said, send Jamie the photo of the peach colored rose. Now, nobody on the planet knows. Not only did y'all give me roses every week, they were peach colored. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The guy says with his hands in his lap, Jean opens up a photo of a peach colored rose. And underneath, he opens the caption of the photo, Peaches and Cream. (laughs) Now, night before, this guy had said to me, your husband wants you to know 
that your time is now. And I had said to the guy, Jean always used to say to me, the cream always rises to the top. So peaches and cream. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here were our examples that I just gave you of how our loved ones can dialogue with us and we can dialogue back with the help of human and animal open vessels and earthly props, electronics. Now, at this point, I show you how you can also engage in a direct dialogue where you talk back and forth. And I show you how to do it in writing, mm -hmm. how to do it uh, orally or tape it, and how to do it in order to, as I said, get guidance, to say farewell. Now, there are certain groups that must reconnect and stay connected. The elderly who may never wish to form a primary attachment, children who have lost parents, parents who have lost children, you got to reconnect, you got to stay connected, there's no question about it. You got to reconnect if someone was ripped from you due to an accident or sudden illness, but you absolutely must reconnect and dialogue if you have unfinished business. Mm -hmm. well, here I show you how to do my visualization and my meditation for making contact, and then we dialogue back and forth, back and forth, until you heal the unfinished business. Now, I want everybody watching to know something, and this is so uplifting and reassuring because most people believe, well, if somebody left his or her body before you worked it out, you're SOL too late. That's the Western approach. Mm -hmm. And I am here to tell you it is the opposite. You often have to wait until somebody leaves his or her body in order to work it out. Mm -hmm. As one of my patients said, I wish my mother would hurry up and die so we could work this out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we hold, hold on so much resistance, don't we? It's like, well, and it's also also too, because the person who has done us wrong, right, does wrong, right, <laughs> doesn't understand, doesn't have a full understanding of how he or she messed up with us mm -hmm. until he or she leaves his body, because they have a life review when they leave their bodies, and basically all the ways that you screwed up are put in your yeah. face. Okay, so. How I discovered that they only get it when they leave their bodies was one week after Jean left his body. I went in to do the car repair thing. They didn't know me because Jean did it. You're smiling because you know what I'm going to say. You know. <laughs> you seem to know. Her. So anyway, I in and I introduced myself to Debbie. And I say, Jean just left his body. Hello. I'm doing it now. And she says, I'm a widow too. With that, her husband starts beating down my door with messages for her. He says, tell her, stop making the same mistake that I made with our son because now mm -hmm. she's creating the same power struggle. Mm -hmm. I say this, she bursts into tears, she confirms it's true. But it blew my mind because I realized he didn't get it till he was out of his body. Now there's one other really, really important thing. Not only do they get it when they leave their bodies, they desperately need you to confront them on how they made a mistake with you, how they messed up with you, because their own spiritual growth and evolution requires them to face what they have done, and they need you to help them face it. And they're not going to be in peace until they face it, until they know you've also worked it out and you're okay too. Now, how I discovered this was, it was the first Good Friday after Jean left his body, and he told me to go to the bird lady, Lainey. She tried to help us save our little canary, Fluffy, but she wasn't successful. And I didn't know her personally, but he says, go to her bird studio. Mm -hmm. So I go. I walk in the door, and right near the entrance is this little Gouldian finch looking all puffed up and slumped over, not good. Mm -hmm. And she says to me, this bird will be dead by nightfall. It hasn't eaten in two days. So I said, can I try to help the bird? And she says, yeah, if you want. So I go over to the cage and I press my cheek to the bars. Now, normally a bird would freak and run. The bird did not. I begin to energetically communicate with the bird. Remember? Mm -hmm. Sending energetic signals. Now, mm -hmm. I speak aloud so that Lainey can hear. I say to the bird, I want you to go down to your seed bowl right now and I want you to start to eat. The bird instantly obeys, starts scarfing up seeds like a little mini vacuum. The more the bird eats, the stronger <laughs> the bird gets, and now it's starting to chirp and it's looking just fine. Now I suddenly hear a message. Sounds like Lainey's mother, and I hear her saying, I'm sorry I was such a weakling and I didn't protect you from him. I say this. Lainey mm. bursts into tears. She says, that's my mom. She used to call herself a weakling. 
Now I look back at the bird. The bird's looking sick again, craning its neck upward, and it stopped eating. And I'm aware there's another spirit presence that's making this bird sick. So I tell the bird, forget about this. I'll help Laney with the spirit. Go back to eating. The bird goes back. And now I'm aware that it's Laney's father. And he says, I know that you are still afraid of me because I molested you sexually when you were little. And I am begging you to confront me on what I did to you. I can't grow and I can't heal until I have you make me face this. Mm -hmm. And you need to make me face it so that you stop being a scared, abused little girl. So we use my dialoguing with the departed back and forth, back and forth, until she worked it out with him. And the little bird lived too. Mm, That's good. The beautiful thing. Now, there's just one more piece that I want everybody to get. We all know that our purpose here on earth is to perfect our ability to love our, ourselves and others. This world is our love lab. That's all we're here for. Now, I am living proof of the challenge. How do you love yourself when you've been physically and verbally abused by your parents? And I tell my story openly and nakedly. It wasn't easy to do, but I tell it. Mm-hmm. And I describe the fact that my whole life, even though I spent 27 years with Jean, pouring love on me. Deep inside, I did not love myself enough. My parents' voices still resonated in my head, tearing me down, putting me down, telling me what was wrong with me. No matter how much success I had, I was still not good enough. My self-esteem was being torn down by the voices of my parents. After Jean left his body, I went to my professional group in the city And I was crying and I said, I've just got to make this stop. And all the shrinks, you know, who fly in from all over the world, tell them to shut the F up and (laughs) have our voices, shout them out. And this never worked for me, never worked for my patients. I go home, I get on my knees and I am crying and I am begging Jean, you've got to help me. I can't take this anymore. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I know, he appears to me as the embodiment of love. Mm. He's surrounded in golden light. He takes my face in his hands. He turns me toward him in the light. And he says to me, Jamie, listen, listen, listen to me. Let my love for you fully enter you. And in that moment, I was healed. And I realized I had to wait until he was out of his body in order to be healed. Because now that he was freed from the physical vessel of his body, his soul essence and all of his love could enter me unimpeded Mm. and be my own self love. So reconnecting with your loved ones in spirit is your fast track to self love. And love never dies shows you how to do this so that you can let them fill your heart to overflowing, heal every corner of your soul, mind, body, spirit, fill you as I said, as a well that's overflowing with love, and now you can bring that love to the world. Hmm. And that's where it dies. Hmm. I love that. It's like this whole journey that you take us on. Yeah. 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 So I'm curious, um, thinking back, what yeah. would you have liked to have known before Jean's passing that, um, like, how would you have lived life differently if you knew what you know now? back then? Well, I can't say that I would have lived in any way differently. Mm-hmm. The only thing that, I mean, look, as I said, Jean was as one of the, the most spiritually evolved beings on the planet. Like I said, the Dalai Lama said that he was one of the 50 men who was one with God. And even he did not realize how close he could be to me after he left his body. And even he, you know, I talk in Love Never Dies how we had this problem as he got older and he was coming closer and closer to leaving his body. He started to get really afraid to leave me because he thought I would die of a broken heart. Mm. And so he started to hold me off. And it became a real source of pain. You know, why are you holding me off? Why are you pushing me away? Why are you keeping me at arm's length? Had he known how close he could be to me. He wouldn't have been as afraid. And he, so I think that this is a lesson for all of us. Mm -hmm. We don't need to fear loving and losing. We can just leap off the ledge of love, love with our whole hearts 
Love is the currency of connection. It helps us reconnect to our loved ones in spirit. So we don't need to fear loving and losing. And I suppose that would be the only thing that I would say. There would be no guarding of the self, no holding back. I wouldn't have, you know, sort of crumpled in on myself and felt so hurt. Oh, you're rejecting me. I've got to pull away. That's, that would be the one thing. He wouldn't have had that issue, and I wouldn't have had my response to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And, and it's that remembrance that whether we have a physical body or we don't, yeah. when you get to the essence, we are all energy. And That's so, it. yeah, we can connect. And I think the, the, the body is what kind of, it's that it illusion. Yeah. yeah. And it gets in the way because people real, you know, I have so many people on Hay House when they call me, and they, let's say they've been disconnected for decades mm-hmm. or they've had an unfinished business for decades. I show them how to reconnect. We do it on air. And they feel closer to their loved ones than when their loved ones were in a body. Mm-hmm. When mm-hmm. I, I'm doing, as I said, I'm doing Love Never Dies retreats, right? And I'm also doing them at sea now. Nice. I take <laughs> with me, you know, like on a floating university. You can find all this at Ask Dr. Love. And I do live and virtual retreats here at my home. People spend four hours with me practicing the exercises in part three. And by the time they're done, they are so able to recognize all the signs, not only their signs, all the participants' signs. They're in the deep end. And what happens is they tell me I am closer now than I ever was. And I'm also sure. certifying and training coaches. And one of my coaches was resisting reconnecting to her husband in spirit. And finally she said, it's because I'm afraid I'll miss him more. Mm. Sort of like, you know, yeah. if I have a taste of the donut, I'll want the whole donut. Yep. She thought she would feel worse. So everybody flew in from all over the world for the coaches weekend, the weekend training. And it was clear her husband was saying, listen, I just want to get down with her. You know, so <laughs> I just said, listen. He just wants to be with you physically. So she allowed herself to really make, let him make love to her. When it all was said and done, it was such, we all had to smoke a cigarette. It was just, <laughs> you know, it was such a static experience. And from this point on, she's been in ecstasy. She says, I am closer to him now than ever. Mm, oh, that's so beautiful. That's yeah. so beautiful. And to remind ourselves that we always can have that connection. And, yes. and I love how, how you talk about how it's so important to resolve those unresolved things that you have with loved ones, because we, most of us have <laughs> unresolved stuff with people. Yeah. So yes, it's so true. We all do. Yeah, absolutely. You are lovely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so to wrap up, I'm wondering if you have a practical tip for the viewers and, and give them something Besides, of course, getting your book, <laughs> what they can do um, starting today. Well, the first thing I will say is it's, you know, every chapter in Love Never Dies begins with an epigraph, something John channeled into me that was a quote. This one, if you make this your mantra, you'll be off and running. Oh, good. You can allow the mystery to unfold by not believing everything you've been told. Mm, yes. How okay. true is that? <laughs> right. Now, uh, it, at AskDrLove.com, you'll find everything. You'll find my retreats. You'll find my, my cruises. I'm doing one in November, one in January. You'll find my live speaking engagements. I'm going to be at Kripalu in the summer. I'm going to be at Lilydale. I'm going to be all over nice. the place. You will find out if you, if you feel called to want to help others, you can become one of my certified coaches. Soon I'm going to have an online live live online course. That'll be very, very soon. The audiobook is coming soon. And if you buy the book uh, through my website, my fulfillment house has autographed copies from me. Oh, excellent. So excellent. they'll ship you an autographed copy. I want to give a free gift also. Mm-hmm. Go May ahead. Give free yes. gift. You love, we love those gifts, right? Yeah. So when you sign up for my newsletter at AskDrLove.com, you will receive the preface and the intro of the book as a free gift. And that is a way to get you going because when the book <laughs> sold out, everybody just said, listen, I got to do something here. I got to get going. I'm a love junkie here. So then you, you, by the time you've read the preface and the intro, the book will have arrived in the mail. Mm-hmm, After mm-hmm. you purchase the book, send proof of purchase to webmaster at AskDrLove.com. You'll see this on the upper right corner of AskDrLove.com. And you will receive a, a private, exclusive showing 
of a talk that I gave at the Bigger Game Expo where Jean made his first manifestation on camera. Oh, how cool. How cool. That's a special treat. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. I bet with, because I was reading your book, and so the, um, you know, what you guys are going to get for free is going to be, it's like a huge teaser, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's awesome yeah, nobody can eat wait what is it nobody can what is the oh nobody can eat just one it is <laughs> potato chips yeah <laughs> right yeah. excellent yeah. so um any last words that anything that you're feeling called to share anything from spirit or or jean yes. <laughs> Just remember your loved ones are waiting to reconnect with you. They don't leave us. We leave them. Yeah. We leave them. And so let love never dies enable you to just shed like a, like the way a snake sheds its skin. Shed all these false beliefs, all false religious teachings. Let love never dies show you how to be receptive, recognize the signs, and then ultimately reconnect and dialogue. Mm -hmm. And your life is going to change. You cannot believe. I have this new coach. She started with me this week. She attended the, my retreat in November. She said that she was so bereft that she wanted to die. And then mm -hmm. she read Love Never Dies and her grief transformed to joy. All of her friends said, we think you're crazy. What's wrong with you? Why are you so happy? <laughs> this isn't normal. So she said in the retreat, I can't keep this joy for myself. Mm -hmm. I have to teach others how to do it. So this is my message to you. I can't keep this joy for myself. Just let love never dies guide you. Mm -hmm. Reconnect and transform your grief to joy. Excellent. Well, thank you, Dr. JB, for joining me today. This was, oh my goodness, just a, a beautiful conversation um, that I know that a lot of people are going to really resonate with and it's going to help them reconnect with their loved ones. So thank you so much. Love being with you. Yeah. And now for you, my gorgeous goddess, was there something from the show that resonated with you? If so, I'd love to hear about it. Head on over to today's show page at theawakenedgoddess.com and leave me a comment. Did you enjoy this episode? If so, subscribe to the show on iTunes and please share it with all of your friends. And if you want even more incredible resources, join the Awakened Goddess community to get bonus content from the show. And until next time, goodbye everyone! Thank you for listening to this episode of the Awakened Goddess show. I hope you enjoyed today's guest and got something you can start using in your life right away. For more spiritual insights and to listen to more episodes, subscribe to The Awakened Goddess Show at theawakenedgoddess.com and discover wisdom that'll change your life. <laughs>